Good evening, sisters and brothers. Uh, welcome to this evening's uh, evening prayer. Today being uh, Monday, the 23rd of November. So let us, let us come and bring our day to the Lord and, uh, and to say thanks to God for keeping us through this day and to ask for his help as we enter into this night. Let's pray. O God, make speed to save us. O Lord, make haste to help us. Bless the Lord, O my soul. O Lord, my God, how excellent is your greatness. You are clothed with majesty and honor, wrapped in light as in a garment. The sun knows the time for its setting. You make darkness that it may be night. O Lord, how manifold are your works. In wisdom you have made them all. The earth is full of your creatures. When you send forth your spirit, they are created, and you renew the face of the earth. May the glory of the Lord endure forever. May the Lord rejoice in his works. I will sing to the Lord as long as I live. I will make music to my God while I have my being. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. That this evening may be holy, good, and peaceful, let us pray with one heart and mind. As our evening prayer rises before you, O God, so may your mercy come down upon us to cleanse our hearts and set us free to sing your praise now and forever. Amen. And I'll collect for this evening. Kindle in our hearts, O God, the flame of love which never ceases, that it may burn in us, giving light to others, May we shine forever in your temple, set on fire with your eternal light, even your Son, Jesus Christ, our Saviour and our Redeemer. Amen. And our confession. Almighty and most merciful Father, we have erred and strayed from thy ways like lost sheep. We have followed too much the devices and desires of our own hearts. We have offended against thy holy laws. We have left undone those things which we ought to have done, and we have done those things which we ought not to have done, and there is no health in us. But thou, O Lord, have mercy upon us, miserable offenders. Spare thou them, O God, which confess their faults. <coughs> Restore thou them that are penitent, according to thy promises declared unto mankind in Christ Jesus our Lord. And grant, O most merciful Father, for his sake, that we may hereafter live a godly, righteous, and sober life, to the glory of thy holy name. Amen. And our psalm for this evening. Our psalm for this evening is Psalm, psalm 80, Psalm 80. Okay, Psalm 80. Hear us, shepherd of Israel, you who lead Joseph like a flock, you who sit enthroned between the cherubim, shine forth before Ephraim, Benjamin, and Manasseh. Awaken your might. Come and save us. Restore us, O God. Make your face shine upon us that we may be saved. How long, Lord God Almighty, will your anger smolder against the prayers of your people? You have fed them with the bread of tears. 
You have made them drink tears by the bowlful. You have made us an object of derision to our neighbors and our enemies mock us. Restore us, God Almighty. Make your face shine upon us that we might be saved. You transplanted a vine from Egypt. You drove out the nations and planted it. You cleared the ground for it, and it took root and filled the land. The mountains were covered with its shade, the mighty cedars with its branches. Its branches reached as far as the sea, its shoots as far as the river. Why have you broken down its walls so that all who pass by pick its grapes? Boars from the forest ravage it and insects from the fields feed on it. Return to us, God Almighty. Look down from heaven and see. Watch over this vine, the root your right hand has planted, the sun you have raised up for yourself. Your vine is cut down, it is burned with fire. At your rebuke, your people perish. Let your hand rest on the man at your right hand, the son of man you have raised up for yourself. Then we will not turn away from you. Revive us and we will call on your name. Restore us, Lord God Almighty. Make your face shine upon us that we might be saved. Amen. Ah, I will read the first um, I'll, I'll read the second, the second commentary or meditation from Keller's book. He calls it The Vine of God. The people of God are like a vine. A vine is not pieced together by human ingenuity, but is a living thing. So Christians are creations of God's spirit whose life is implanted within them bearing the spiritual fruit of love and joy, peace and humility. Vines do not naturally grow towering and tall, and it is incongruous that this vine overshadows mountains and the tallest trees. So Christians are creations of God's supernatural grace. In themselves, they are foolish, weak and lowly, but through Christ, they can change the world. Are you just a nice person or a new spiritually new person? Is your character changing, growing in spiritual fruit daily like a vine? Amen. Lord, we should be growing more loving, more courageous, more self-forgetful every year, every day. But we confess to you that we are not. Help us see where we are not bearing fruit. Thank you for being a God of life. Help us put our roots deeper into you so we can honor you by growing more into your likeness. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. <clears throat> All right, our New Testament reading is Matthew, Matthew chapter 9, from verse 18 to 34. Matthew 9, verse 18 to 34. While he was saying these things to them, suddenly a leader of the synagogue came in and knelt before him, saying, My daughter has just died, but come and lay your hand on her and she will live. Jesus got up and followed him with his disciples. Then suddenly a woman who had been suffering from hemorrhages for 12 years came up behind him and touched the fringe of his cloak. For she said to herself, if I only touch his cloak, I will be made well. Jesus turned and seeing her, he said, take heart, daughter, your faith has made you well. 
and instantly the woman was made well. When Jesus came to the leader's house and saw the flute players and the crowd making a commotion, he said, Go away, for the girl is not dead, but sleeping. But they laughed at him. But when the crowd had been put outside, he went in and took her by the hand, and the girl got up. And the report of this spread throughout that district. As Jesus went on from there, two blind men followed him, crying loudly, Have mercy on our son of David. When he entered the house, the blind men came to him. And Jesus said to them, Do you believe that I am able to do this? They said to him, Yes, Lord. And he touched their eyes and said, According to your faith, let it be done to you. And their eyes were opened. And Jesus sternly ordered them, See that no one knows of this. But they went away and spread the news about him throughout that district. After they had gone away, a demonic, demoniac, who was mute, was brought to him. And when the demon had been cast out, the, the one who had been mute spoke. The crowds were amazed and said, Never has anything like this been seen in Israel. But the Pharisees said, By the ruler of the demons, he casts out demons. And uh, we'll stop there for tonight. 34, yes. And of course, as Jesus is carrying on his ministry, he's healing. And that, just to remind you, sisters and brothers, that the healings of Jesus, the miracles of Jesus, are lessons just as much as his teachings are lessons that we that that, that he's doing for our benefit. He's, he's teaching us something about the kingdom of God in his miracles as much as he did in his parables. So here we have a number of healings. We have first the synagogue ruler who came to him asking about his little his daughter. Now, Mark's gospel gives us a little bit more detail. We are told in Mark's gospel that the name of the synagogue ruler is Jairus. And, um, and, and we are told about the woman as well, a little bit more about the situation with the woman who had the blood flowing for 12 years. And um, she crept up behind Jesus and said, if I can just touch the, the hem of his garment, it's a wonderful faith. I don't need to touch him. I just need to touch I, 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 just the, 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 the tip of his cloak. If I can just touch that, I will be healed. It's the faith of this person. And so you have the, the faith of the Jairus, the, the, the synagogue ruler, who believed that Jesus cannot just heal his daughter, but can bring him back to life. And here Jesus goes, but on his way, on his way, a woman, as it were, stopped him in his tracks. In, in Mark's gospel, Jesus says, power came out of me. Somebody touched me. The disciples say, how you, you know, there's so many people. What do you mean? Of course, they're all touching you. Jesus says, no, no, no. Somebody touched me by faith. There are a whole lot of people touching me, but none of them are touching me by faith. There's this woman touched Jesus by faith and power went out from Jesus into her and brought healing. Sisters and brothers, this is the kind of lesson we need to hear. It's touching Jesus by faith. It is, it is exercising our faith in him that will produce results. You know, I've said it many times, isn't it? There are people who can be around Jesus. They can be in the church. 
They can be very much um, Christian, but are not experiencing the fullness of Jesus in their lives. Why? Because they are not touching him by faith. It is all good, well and good to be around Jesus, to be even touching him, but you're not getting the benefit, the blessing from Jesus. Why? Because we are not engaging our faith when we come to him. And so this woman touched him by faith. And of course, then we have the two blind men. And, the, and, and blindness in the Bible is a, is a, is, is a symbol of spiritual, uh, physical blindness is a symbol of, of spiritual blindness. And so you have these two blind men who cry out to Jesus. Uh, have mercy on me, son of David, have mercy on us. And again, it's that cry, that sense that Jesus can, can save us. Jesus can heal us. Have mercy on us, son of David. And Jesus said, do you want, what do you want? Do you believe I can do this? They said, yes, Jesus said, let it be. Let it be. And he touched their eyes and it was open. And of course, Jesus healed a demoniac, a man who was demon possessed. All of this. So Jesus had all this power. And of course, the demon possession, possession is, is power over the supernatural. It wasn't just to show that he can, he can do natural things, as it were, open blind eyes and even raise the dead. But he has power over supernatural. Matthew wants us to see that Jesus has not just power over the dead, power over blindness, and power over uh, someone who's suffering you know, from a, a bleeding for many years, uh, what you could, would call chronic illness, uh, years and years of chronic pain. Jesus can, 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 can deliver you, but Jesus can also deliver the person who is bound by Satan in addiction and, and, and by the enemy who, who comes and, uh, and take possession of their souls. Jesus can also deliver such a one. Sisters and brothers, this is a kind of God we serve. And Jesus is that person. What, what does it take to receive this from him? Faith, trust, absolute abandonment of, of all that we are to him. Just like this woman who comes up and said, I want to touch him. Because I know that if I touch him, I shall be made whole. Jesus Christ is the one who we need to reach out to tonight. Whatever our situation, whatever our problem, whatever our concern, whatever that's on our minds, we need to reach out to him and touch him and let him, let his power flow through us and bring us the hope, the joy, the healing, whether it's physical, emotional, or spiritual healing that we need in our life today. Tonight, let's pray. Our Father in heaven, we thank you, Lord, for your grace and mercy to us in bringing us to the end of another day. We are grateful, O oh God, for Jesus. The Lord, he opens blind eyes. He, he heals bodies of illness and he raised the dead and he cast out demons lord jesus we invite you into our lives to do all of these things to us by faith help us lord to trust in your unfailing power so that we can be delivered from whatever it is that is oppressing us and causing us, that is taking away our joy, that is taking away our peace, 
and our hope. Lord, may we touch you by faith so that we can be restored, delivered, and saved. Lord, we pray for ourselves. We pray for th th those that are, that, Lord, we think about those that are on our prayer list who desperately need to experience your touch in their lives. Whatever it is that they might be going through tonight, they, they need to experience your healing, your deliverance, your assurance of grace and mercy. Lord, they need their blind eyes to be open. They need their bodies to be whole. They need the enemy to stop oppressing and possessing them. Lord, some are dead in their trespasses and sins and need to be resurrected. Need to be brought into the life, the fullness of God's life. Lord, hear our prayer for those tonight. Those who are in these circumstances who need to experience your healing touch, your supernatural power in their lives. Hear us, O oh God, we pray. And so, Lord, we bring all our concern to you tonight. And we ask for your intervention in our lives tonight. Even as we go to sleep, we pray, Lord, that you will protect us through the hours of this night. That your angels surround us and keep us safe from all that's evil. We pray, Lord, that you will be with us as we sleep. Give us the peace, the rest, the comfort we need tonight. We bring all our anxieties to you. We bring all of our cares to you. We bring, Lord, all that's on our hearts to you tonight. And we ask, Lord, for your healing touch. We ask for your grace to lighten the burden of our hearts tonight. And may we rest peacefully. Give us pleasant dreams, Lord, no nightmares. Give us pleasant dreams so that we can experience your grace and your salvation, your deliverance in our souls, in our lives. Tonight we pray. In Jesus' name, amen. The, the prayer that we are praying tonight or for today is for schools and colleges, children and young people. We give God thanks for the sacrifice and the commitment of teachers and all those involved in serving children and young people in education. We pray that all might be nurtured and cared for and that every needful resource would be made available that all lives can flourish even in those, these difficult times and that no one will be overlooked. Amen. And let's say a few night prayers before we say goodbye tonight and do do bring all your prayers to the Lord tonight, sisters and brothers. Whether silently or articulating them, bring them to the Lord. Because he hears us when we cry out to him. Guide us waking, O Lord, and guard us sleeping, that awake we may watch with Christ, and asleep we may rest in peace. Into your hands, O Lord, I commend my spirit. For you have redeemed me, O Lord, O God of truth. Keep us, O Lord, as the apple of your eye. 
hide us under the shadow of your wings. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Be our light in the darkness, O Lord, and in your great mercy, defend us from all perils and dangers of this night. For the love of your only Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. So we have our song. So may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord look kindly upon you and give you his peace and his rest and his all-sufficient grace to sustain you tonight as you sleep. Amen. Have a good night, sisters and brothers. <laughs>